one part inspiration, some degree of imitation, and a great deal of exploration. These are but a few of the facets that make up the beautiful chaos of the creative process, and it is not until one finds the right balance between them that the finished narrative can be fully realized. However, during that process, it is exceedingly common for writers to get a little lost, becoming disoriented in the contemplative quagmire of their own creativity. Therein, finding themselves seemingly bereft of the kind of perspective required to create a concise and cohesive narrative. But, although doubt may deter, and new conflicting inspirations may distract, these challenges are no match for true clarity of vision. Greetings, good storytellers. I am the Artful Narrator, and it is my privilege to welcome you to learn the tropes of writing. Today, we are going to take a look at some of the pitfalls that writers may encounter during the creative process that we might better understand how to keep the vision of our narratives strong and vibrant. I ask you, what could possibly be in my eye that would explain this? Now, first off, when caught in the swirling tides of inspiration, one can sometimes neglect to create a unified and consistent tone for the narrative, which is a vital tool for helping to determine the parameters for the level of realism, logic, and levity that the narrative will adhere to. In this vein, I would ask you to cast your mind back to the 60s to consider a much less grim iteration of the legendary Caped Crusader, portrayed by the one and only. Adam West. The Batman series in 1966 was a show which, though ridiculous, was no less brilliant despite the absurdity. Or, as I'm about to show you, was maybe all the more marvelous because of it. Are you alright? Never better. Well, I'm used to seeing you do the impossible, but getting out of that plaster tomb was impossible. Much easier than it seemed, Robin. I simply held my breath. Now in an audio commentary for the 1966 Batman movie, Adam West described how everyone on the show absolutely got what it was about, from the writers and directors to the actors, extras, and set designers, a fact which is abundantly clear if you examine the show, because everything is so consistently and cohesively preposterous from the way that everyone always refers to Bruce Wayne's home as stately Wayne Manor, to the perpetual childlike awe with which Commissioner Gordon greets every aspect of his job, or the fact that practically everything in the entire city of Gotham, be it the secret entrance to the Bat Cave via the Bat Poles, the Penguin's henchmen, or the death machines which Batman and Robin inevitably get strapped to, are all lovingly labeled for the viewer's convenience, each and every aspect attesting to the fact that the show knew exactly what it wanted to be and wholeheartedly manifested that desire with wild abandon and great clarity of vision. Once again, we're in your debt, Cape Crusaders. Just doing our job, Commissioner. But another way in which stories can sometimes lack clarity of vision is through writers ignoring the old adage, keep it simple, stupid. Which is good advice, though rather curtly phrased for my tastes. But the point still stands, for by overpopulating the narrative with too many side plots, or implementing a needlessly convoluted structure for the main plot, one can overcomplicate the narrative to the point that it is hard for the audience to fully understand what is going on, or downright amazing that the characters themselves can follow the plot. For one reason or another, the motion picture which you're about to see is not very clear in spots. How someone in what is known 
as the front office has thought that an occasional word from me might help to clarify the plot and other vague portions of the film. And while it can be a sign of exceptional skill to craft a story with plots that have a certain randomness or complexity, it is valuable to remember that great narratives often have a cadence to them, with themes within the story repeating throughout the plot, like the refrain in a song, thus creating order out of chaos and granting elegance to the structure. If you ain't got elegance, you can never ever carry it off. And an excellent example of that principle can be found in the film Back to the Future, which has been described as having a plot which fit together like a Swiss watch, a merit which is due to the excellent plotting and pacing by the writers Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale who described how they used the index card method of writing to lay everything out, painstakingly establishing the plots and themes that would run throughout the whole narrative. We had a big bulletin board in our office, and we would say, okay, we know, for example, Marty goes back in time. So an index card goes up, says Marty goes back in time, and then towards the end, Marty goes back to the future. That's another card. So we said, okay, wouldn't it be cool if he invented rock and roll? So we put up a card saying, Marty invents rock and roll. Well, we need to establish that he can play rock and roll and that he wants to play rock and roll. So that means that somewhere on the bulletin board before the card that says he goes back in time, establish Marty's desire and ability to play rock and roll. Same thing with the skateboard. If he's gonna invent the skateboard, show him on the skateboard. So these pairs of index cards would come up. The end result is a story with impressive clarity of vision, where the narrative flows along briskly and easily, with hardly a wasted plot point to distract you. What about all that talk about screwing up future events, the space-time continuum? Well, I figure, what the hell? And lastly, another conundrum that can confound a writer in their quest for clarity of vision is the occurrence where the focus of the story shifts slightly during the narrative's development and becomes out of sync with the heart of the tale. In this instance, most of the same plot points and characters are still there, but certain character arcs and events are downplayed in favor of others to the detriment of the overall narrative. What are you saying exactly? To help illustrate my point, I'd like you to consider The Hobbit, and more specifically, two distinct iterations of its narrative. For when Peter Jackson adapted the book for the big screen, the focus of the narrative was changed, and instead of telling the story of The Hobbit, he gave us the story of the prelude to The Lord of the Rings. This resulted in nearly all the same events happening However, the significance of Bilbo's story was pushed aside to make more room for fleshing out the other characters and building the events which would lead to the return of Sauron, rendering Bilbo as little more than a side character in his own adventure. Yes, now, as I said, there were two iterations of this tale, and the second took the form of the 1977 animated Rankin-Bass film, The Hobbit, which, with an amazing clarity of vision, somehow managed to condense the some 300-page plot of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit into an 80-minute runtime, while still hitting all the important beats from the book that masterfully depict Bilbo's gradual transformation from simple, food-loving hobbit of the Shire into a wry, competent master burglar. The dragons smug, the spiders too, the goblins, the elven king. They came to know the power of the hobbit and his ring. Now I do not mean to say that one had more clarity of vision than the other. But rather, I wish to show you how, when faced with a broad landscape of possibilities, 
The same core story can have many, distinctly different outcomes, depending on what aspects the writer chooses to focus on. Well, we certainly had a big part in this show. Which brings us to, perhaps, one of the most important and impactful questions that a writer can contemplate. What is the heart of your story? Shorn of all the flashy fights, stunning dialogue, subplots, sideplots, heroes, and villains, what is your story's heart? What is its center? This can sometimes be a deceptively difficult question, for we cannot help wanting a great deal from our stories, whether it is wishing them to establish new legendary characters, pay homage to the writers that inspired us, or merely set up sequels. But the truth is that a story can only be so many things, and knowing what the heart of your story is can help you to focus your narrative scope, that you might prioritize the characters and events that will be the most apropos to telling the well-constructed narrative that your story deserves. This wonder is what I put into the world and what I protect in children. It is what makes me a guardian. It is my center. What is yours? Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video has been informative, or at the very least, a pleasant diversion. Godspeed, Adam West. You will be dearly missed, but the stars in the heavens will shine all the more brightly for your presence among them. Until next time, good storytellers.